The far right, led by Marine Le Pen, has gained its best ever result in the first round of a presidential election in France. A full third of voters went for Le Pen, Zemmour or Nicolas Dupont-Aignan. Win or not, Le Pen is all but certain to lead the far right to its best second round result in history. Le Pen's success is down to three factors. The first is the contrasting effect created by Eric Zemmour. The upstart entered the race amid feverish speculation that he would dethrone Le Pen as the leader of the far right. His positions on most social issues, in particular immigration and Islam, are far more radical than Le Pen's. Thus, he immediately makes her appear more moderate when she rejects his proposals. Second, it has long been Le Pen's intention to campaign as a unity candidate rather than attempting to capitalise on the anger of the electorate. Positioning herself as a soothing alternative after five years of Macron, who was frequently accused of accentuating rather than healing social fractures within France, has helped her improve her image. An Elab poll last month found her to be the country's second favourite politician, an unprecedented result for a far right leader. Le Pen is a familiar face, but she has been gaining on Macron. Partly because Macron is the incumbent, but partly too because her campaign has been doing a much better job of speaking to the French public. Her focus on the cost of living, similar to the campaign of Jean-Luc Mélenchon, has dealt electoral dividends. Voters look at Le Pen and now associate her slightly more with being good at handling the economy. Macron is now defending a record. In 2017, he was one of but many change candidates. Now, he's a status quo candidate. He is the president, the incumbent. And voters associate him more with stability and security as opposed to shaking things up. Le Pen long ago chose the cost of living as her central campaign issue months before it became as central to the political debate. She is now one of the most trusted voices in the country on the issue, at the precise time that rising fuel prices and inflation have put it top of the agenda. A debate focused on economic issues also helps draw attention away from questions on which the far right is more divisive, such as Islam and foreign policy. Voters in France have never been more desiring of radical change than now. You ask the French public, whether their economic order needs radical root and branch reform, and 66% in France would say yes, the same number that you see in the United States, much more than the 45% in Britain who say the same. Le Pen is seeking to generate the apathy among voters who oppose her and neutralise as much as possible the Republican Front. If she gets over the line, 52 rather than 46, it will be because enough left-wing voters abstain from voting against her in the second round because she no longer scares them. Macron in 2017 was the change candidate. He set up his own party. Voters associated him with shaking up the system. But now he's no such thing, and that matters. The perfect sign of that comes from Jean-Luc Mélenchon's own electoral base. This may sound a little bit odd. Jean-Luc Mélenchon is the French equivalent of Jeremy Corbyn, and Marine Le Pen is a radical rightist, if not far rightist. Mélenchon's own vote, however, is showing signs of sympathy with Marine Le Pen. In 2017, the firebrand leftist's own vote went 52% Macron, 7% Le Pen. The rest either stayed at home or went in the polling station to vote Blanc, which is registering your protest. Now it seems to be 36% Macron, 27% Le Pen. A 20 point increase for Le Pen on 2017. That vote, that split in the Mélenchon base is significant and it is one of the main reasons why the polls are so narrow. What matters in the second round is whether left voters, Mélenchon supporters, come out to back Macron. If enough stay at home, the pen might just squeak it. Let's see what happens. <laughs>